Greetings, Eric the Car Guy here. Recently I've reached the milestone of 100 subscribers and I'd like to thank all of you out there who have subscribed and, and have got me to this point. Uh, I'm hoping to grow this even further so tell your friends. So as a reward to my uh, loyal viewers, uh, it seems that you have a great deal of interest in brakes and one of those things is drum brakes. This is a two-part video uh, that covers the uh, removal and replacement of the brake shoes uh, on a vehicle. I hope the information is helpful. I did what I could. I do what I can to try to make sure that this information is as accurate as I can. But it's kind of hard when you're shooting and you're trying to think of what you're doing, and it's not as easy as you might think. But for the most part, what I'm trying to do is is give the important information so that one, you're able to perform the work successfully, but also that you remain safe in the process. So if I miss something or whatever feel free to let me know. I'm always open to the possibility that I'm wrong. Remember episode one. But once again, thank all of you for uh, subscribing and watching this channel. And I hope this video is helpful and perhaps saves you some money. Now on with the show. All right, step one is cleaning. You wanna get all the gook off of here that you can. So that it doesn't get all over everything, particularly the inside of your lungs. Next, you need special tools. Now, there are several of these special tools. Uh, this one's a multi-tool, spring tool. This is an adjuster tool. This is a spring tool. This is also a spring removal tool. There are a lot of different versions of a lot of different things, but what I start with is the return springs. They're the first things I take off. And this one has this little hook thing here. It goes in under the spring and then out. Now, if you think you might have trouble remembering where all these little springs and everything go, there's a couple of different things you can do. One, you take a picture before you start and that will give you some idea and it's it's the opposite on each side so make sure you take that into account but the other thing you can do is when you set these things down in the direction that they go do that for each one of these and the order that they're in spring loaded but there you go. this one was hooked into the top of this R and up to here okay next you want to undo these all I have to do with this particular type which I have not seen before is just take it and twist it <laughs> Same thing on the other side. Just grab it, lift it up, and away you go. You notice this little spring fell out, and it goes in here on the parking brake assembly against the inside of the shoe and pivots up here. Looks like we have a little pivot on this back side, keep all our stuff organized. And at this point, you should be able to just grab a shoe and pull it off. And what you'll notice down at the bottom is your adjuster has a spring on it. And just curl this over and your shoe will come out. You notice on this one, this one went down to the rivets not a good thing when they go down to the rivets. We'll be replacing drums on this today. Hooked in. This is actually part of the adjuster. You'll deal with this in a minute. This one's actually going to be relatively easy. But this is your adjuster. Ooh. Get off. Notice how one shoe is shorter than the other. The short shoe 
goes in the front, the long shoe goes in the back. You can see the difference. This is what's referred to as a servo style. You want to make sure that you get it back in that order and that you put this back up through there. Lastly, you've got your strut. It runs between the two shoes, keeps them from compressing too far and keeps things in alignment. A little return spring on there, make sure that stays. And you don't want your wheel cylinder to completely bleed out on you. You want it to just stay there. Around the outside you have three bosses. And that is where the shoe will come in contact. So the back side of the shoe here will come in contact with the backing plate here. And it needs to, it needs to ha be able to move freely. What I do is I'm going to come in here with some sandpaper. I usually use a grinding wheel, but sandpaper will do. Come in with some sandpaper, clean these up a little bit, and lubricate them before installing the new shoes. A little piece of sandpaper. I've seen backing plates worn through at these junctures and pretty much what you have to do at that point is replace it. It's much more effective with a whiz wheel. You want to get rid of as much of the ridge as you can. I've seen people with welders weld these things up and then grind them back down uh, or it may come to the point where you have to replace this backing plate. In order to do that you rotate these holes around so you can gain access to each of these fasteners around the outside and you can remove this whole hub assembly and behind it is the backing plate. You also have to remove the wheel cylinder. Okay now that you've got that done I use an anti-seize compound. That's about as liberal as I get. Next thing I'm going to do is around the outside of this so that the next time I go to take the drum off it comes off. Okay, now it's time for the shoes. Remember you had one short shoe, one long shoe. Grab three of them and you'll find which is which. Remember the short shoe goes in the front. One more thing we forgot to do and that's get this little arm off here. This is very simply done, especially with this type. Uh, there is, there is another type that's sort of squeezed together. This is what's referred to as a C-clip. Sort of stick a screwdriver in there and twist it. Pull it out. You'll be able to get the arm off. Don't lose your C-clip. Take your peg with you. Don't destroy the shoes or throw them away. Sometimes there's a core on these shoes, so you need to return them at times in the original box to your parts dealer. If you don't remember, like I don't remember, which hole it went into, you can always look for where the rust was and it goes into the top hole. Put it through there, flip it over, you got your arm. Now same with this, you need to remember where this went because it still needs to hook into a parking brake which is down here and it needs to hook in in this direction. You want to make sure your hook is facing the right way so it can hook in. So if you're looking at the front of the shoe, put that on the back there. Another thing you can do is look for the shiny spots. The shiny spot is there. Flip it over. It's your C-clip. Put it into the groove. I'm going to use that same large pliers that I did before. Push it on there. Once it snaps in place, you're good to go. Make sure it moves. You could lubricate this, but I wouldn't. Okay, this is how I clean and lubricate the star wheel adjuster, as it's called. Now, they don't always move freely like this. In fact, it's more often than not that they're completely frozen. Uh, if that's the case, what you need to do is uh, possibly apply a little bit of heat, put some pliers on it, whatever. But once you get it apart, what you want to do is clean the threads. And I usually use something like a wire wheel to do that with. Uh, then I lubricate it with this anti-seize com compound that you see here. Uh, screw it all the way down so that it's easy to adjust. Then get the rest of the assembly and install it and get it ready to put back on the car.